Ahaha! Trick or treat! My name is Horny! Because I have horns in my head. But because I have horns in my head, uh, if you give me a treat, I will be your trick. No, I'm just kidding. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone today? Welcome to Coffee and Headlines. It's Halloween. It's Halloween. Isn't it Halloween? Isn't it Halloween today? I am thinking that it is Halloween today, and I'm wondering how everybody is doing in this wonderful morning. Today, of course, um, we are going to have a little bit of news, as we always have a little bit of news. But before we go there, let us welcome everybody to the show. This is Coffee and Headlines, our daily get-together live on Facebook every single morning. Boo! Today is Halloween, but not every day. The other days, we exchange headlines and comments and, and, and all kinds of tips and wonderful things for us to enjoy ourselves here in Puerto Vallarta as an English-speaking community of locals that won't be able to go out and do Halloween today because it's just really crazy out there. But I figured I would be in the, in the spirit. Can I take myself seriously looking at myself on the computer with horns on my head? I'm not entirely sure, but um, <clears throat> I don't know. Should I go back to my regular normal self? You let me know if, you, if this is too much um, or I can, I can wear another costume too. Now, anyhow, we are always welcomed by wonderful people, friends that join us on a daily basis or pretty frequently. Um, and if you are new to the broadcast, just let us know that you're new. And you can do that by writing the word new in your comments. And that way, we'll be able to give you a proper welcome. If uh, you are one of our regulars, you know we are always happy to see uh, where everybody is. Uh, like Bill, who's back in San Diego. Uh, Mike is in Chicago. Linda is in Yakima. Betsy is in the house in Emiliano Zapata. Karen is in Minnesota. Uh, you guys are everywhere. And that always makes me so very happy, so very happy. Um, as always, if there are any specific questions that you may have, um, I want you to let us know by writing the letter Q in your question. Otherwise, I may not know if you're having a conversation among yourselves or if you want us to cover something specific uh, today. Uh, <clears throat> Michael had another explosive singing session last night. I want to hear about this because explosive singing sessions sound like, well... I can have explosive singing sessions. I had an explosive singing session yesterday, but I don't think it was like yours, Michael. <laughs> um, Lisa is in Ontario. Uh, who else is here? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Rest in peace, Sean Connery. I am curious to know what is your favorite movie of Sean Connery's. Um, <clears throat> there are so many of them out there. But... Um, I think my favorite film of his is The Name of the Rose. I don't know if you know that, but The Name of the Rose is, um, oh, it's a murder mystery that happens in a monastery in the middle of nowhere, in a hill, in the middle of a country in Europe, and it is just absolutely precious. It is absolutely wonderful. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Evelyn Walsh says, I'm hilarious. Oh, honey, you haven't seen The Pickle. If you saw the pickle, then you might think I'm hilarious. Um, 
Oh my God, a lot of you don't know the pickle. Well, maybe maybe we should bring out the pickle at some point. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I can be your trick, Sean. Well, give me a treat and I'll be your trick. Because um, I'm horny, I'm horny. Um, let's see, I keep the horns, love it, says Kathleen. Okay, I'll keep the horns, what the heck. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see what else is going on. Um, this should be Paco's <laughs> everyday um, uniform. I'm not sure. What does my horny costume look like from the waist down? Asking for friends. What is this with people asking for friends? Who uh, who is the friend? Is 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 the friend a single friend that has the power to summon a bunch of mortals to ask questions for him or her? Or do we all have a? I don't understand the business of asking for a friend. Maybe I am that, I don't know who the friend is, but what does my horny costume look like from the waist down? It's pretty boring. If you really want to see it, I can get up and prance around the living room. Um, I'll be happy to please, you know, this is coffee and headlines. We try to make it, make everybody smile and be happy. Uh, weird sound, not same as mouth. Well, yes, that happens. That happens sometimes. The mouth is out of phase with the technology. What can I tell you? Um, happy Halloween in Seattle. Nice mug face, Linda Barry. I love it. <clears throat> Let's see. Am I feeling a little horny? You have no idea. I don't know if it's the moon or the circumstances or Luna is sitting over there and she's giving me the look. I'm not entirely certain. Um, oh my God, I forgot about The Hunt for Red October. That's also a beautiful film. Absolutely. Uh, bam, 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 bam. If you notice that I'm being unusual, okay. What is happening with the derelict, unfinished, rotting condo building across from the park? Um, nothing that I know of, Brad. It's been sitting there useless and unused for a long time. And I wonder if it's still usable. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they have to tear it down all the way to the ground. Um, so I don't know. I actually don't know exactly what's going on there. La, da, di, la, 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 la. Okay, so I'm done through your first initial um, questions and comments. Today we have very slim pickings in the news, um, which is why I'm being unusually chatty. But there's a few things that I want to talk about. We have a few news bits. We have a few um, a few fun things or leisurely things. I have a great feel good story, uh, not a story to be spooked about, even though if it's Halloween. Um, and, 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 and yes, but I mean, I want to meet this influential friend, Gary, I don't buy this business of not of being afraid to ask, you know, it's like, I want to meet this influential friend that makes everybody ask for him or her, I want to have his power. That's what I want. Um, anyhow, uh, before we go on, uh, I want to take a moment to hold on. Okay, I'll come back to the horns in a second. Yesterday was an intense day, wasn't it? There was a lot of praise. There was a lot of confrontation. There was a lot of all kinds of things. I must say that um, I got a lot of wonderful mail yesterday. And yes, I got some hate mail. Uh, but probably the best bit of mail that I received yesterday I am going to share with this, and it had to do with all the commentary about why Mexicans behave the way we behave or we don't, et cetera, et cetera. And this came from someone that I don't know very well, but totally touched my heart in the best possible way. She said, I am raising a Mexican son. I must educate myself. I mean, that was just the most beautiful set of words, nine words that somebody sent me yesterday. And to see somebody investing themselves in the responsibility of entering our culture just to be a better mother for her son, who she has with a Mexican husband, was just the sweetest, dearest thing that somebody could um, send me yesterday. Um, somebody sent me hate mail and... Um, and it was um, nasty enough that I um, I um, I booted them off the program, and um, and uh, they're no longer going to come back here. 
And I want to make sure, particularly for those people that haven't been around Coffee and Headlines uh, long enough, that you have a clear understanding as to why sometimes my claws come out. It's not because I'm a bitch. Well, I can be, but that's not what we try to do here. I think I have explained and we have discussed how we run things here at Coffee and Headlines enough. But if you are curious um, as to what the guidelines are or what goes or what doesn't go or why things go the way they go here, you know, just write the word explain in your comment. And I would be happy to go over it because ultimately the most important thing is that everybody that comes into it Coffee and Headlines feels good about the experience and understand what we do and why we do what we do. So there you have it. And um, and uh, what happened with the volume? Did something happen with the volume? Because I can hear, I can see the, the levels and the levels tell me that everything's fine and everything seems to be fine. So if anybody's having problems with business, uh, with uh, volume levels, just let me know. And again, uh, if you write the word explain in the comments section, I'll be happy to go into our, our MO. Um, other than that, let us dive into the few news items that I have for you. Bam. Okay, I'm back to horny, I suppose. Uh, let's see. We start with the fact that Hugo Lopez Gatel keeps fielding questions about the fact uh, about face masks. Are we going to mandate them? Are they going to be obligatory? Is it going to be a crime if you don't wear them, et cetera, et cetera? And what Hugo Lopez Gatel is saying is that there are no fines from the federal government if somebody is not wearing a face mask. That said, he also um, explained that um, even though the federal government is not allowed to make it obligatory, well, not, not that it's not allowed. The federal government has chosen not to impose a law that, um, that threatens the basic human rights of deciding whether you want to wear one or not. But states can do that. Cities can do that. So unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, this has not become mandatory um, in, in Jalisco. We use, um, um, the, the, the government has been uh, very explicit in asking the population to do it, but it is not, um, it is not um, something that is the law, and it's not going to be the law. Although it's interesting to see that up north, north of the border, Anthony Fauci is suggesting that uh, the use of face masks should be legalized. And of course, there are people here in Mexico uh, that, uh, that feel the same way. Uh, so we have to basically wait and see how things continue to develop with the pandemic and with this button business that we're going through. Somebody is asking how did the first day with a closer rules go. I have some things to share myself, but I would also like to hear how things went for you guys. Um, in other news, I want you to know that um, this has to do with um, this quarrel that has been going on between the Federalist Alliance of Governors and the 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 federal government, the president, um, and there's this back and forth going on between the governors, uh, particularly Jalisco, and the president as to who should be um, paying money to whom. The states expect the federal government to provide even amounts of money to other states, and um, and uh, our president has said, well, well, you're receiving enough money from us. But Enrique Alfaro has come back, our governor, and said, well, uh, the president owes money to Puerto Vallarta and Nayarit from projects that were announced and have not been uh, completed or fulfilled. And this kind of back and forth is going to continue. Hold on, let me go back to my other self. Hey, I'm back. Um, this whole back and forth is going to continue going in until the governors sit down with the president and have some kind of conversation and let us know exactly what's going on. Let me very quickly take a look at your comments and questions just to see if there's something that we need to talk about. In the meantime, I would love to know how it went for you guys on your first day of, uh, of button pushing. 
uh, for me, I, the day went on as usual. I heard that there were some people that um, dashed over the supermarkets uh, to try to get some food. I was out having dinner, uh, and um, and I made I made it home before eight. And I mean, things went fine for me because that's the kind of lifestyle that I lead. I know that some people posted photographs about uh, the beach not being completely empty. I wonder how all that went. So let me take a quick look at your comments. Um, uh, it's been three days or four days since I hear your remarks about volume, and I keep thinking that my sound mixer is ready to uh, to to be replaced. Karen Thal says, it's my show. Say what you want, do what you want. Give your options. If they don't like, they don't have to watch the show. Well, this is actually true, Karen, but I think it goes beyond that. It, this is not about, and I feel really funny being serious and, 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 and wearing horns. This is not about, it's my show and I can do whatever I feel like. That's that's not my, my motivation. My motivation is and has always been Twofold. Number one, to make sure that we are credible here at Coffee and Headlines. And number two, and most importantly, that we create an environment that is supportive, nurturing, and inspiring that allows us to better connect with the destination. Uh, do I have a personal issue with certain statements that are either negative or don't contribute to the conversation? Absolutely, I do. Uh, why do I get so bent out of shape? Because some people out there seem to think that, well, this is, you're a reporter, you cannot treat people that way, or, or you are a newscast person, you cannot treat people that way. And, and, you know, Coffee and Headlines is really not that. I mean, we're not a magazine, we're not a newspaper, we're not a newscast. We are just entering my living room. And um, I come from the place in which if you invited me to enter your living room, I would know to behave a certain way. And if I didn't behave a certain way, I'm sure you wouldn't want me in your living room. So that's basically where we are coming from. Uh, but if you feel things should go differently, you know, please let me know, because ultimately what we want is for you to enjoy being here. Uh, pa pim pam pam um, the mayor has said in no uncertain terms that he will not mandate mask wearing. Uh, this is correct. Uh, this is one of those things that happens because, um, among other things, I mean, the mayor does not have the manpower to go around the city uh, letting everybody know what they are supposed to do or not supposed to do, uh, which is what it is. I mean, that's neither good nor, nor bad. I mean, that's just not something that is going to happen. Uh, uh, I see this comment from Bill, required or mandatory, uh, w expected, expected, uh, mandatory, uh, required. Well, you know, I don't want to get lost in, 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 in translation or, or definition. You know, the government is not going to fine you for not wearing a face mask. They're not going to send you away, but the government has done everything that, uh, that they think they can do to make sure that the population uh, follows the guidelines as they should. That said, it was really interesting to read a couple of news items about things that happened in Guadalajara City where some people just didn't get the memo and they were getting to the supermarket and the supermarket was closing. And then there's other taxi cab drivers that either didn't get the memo or they felt they didn't have to hear very clearly about the memo and some cap taxi drivers were charging an arm and a leg. So, um, you know, we may be a, a community here that chooses to be very well informed, but I never cease to be amazed at the number of people that simply don't pay attention. And this has nothing to do with nationality or, 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 or a social class or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just that some people... Um, don't don't pay attention. It's crazy. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Pa, pa, da, pa, 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 pa. Uh, all guests wear off the beach at the Sunscape Resort and Spa. Uh, that's good to know. Jeannie was at Swell until closing. Staff explained cutoffs for food. Very glad to see people leaving early and not waiting until 3 p.m. That's awesome. 
uh, beach was empty by three yesterday, says Paul. Pleasantly surprised. Most people seem to be adhering. That's great. Um, let's see. Can the stores and shops make it mandatory to have masks in PV? Uh, yes. Yes, because the government has made it mandatory for stores to follow these guidelines. Um, earlier in the, in the pandemic, Karen, when everything shut down, the government of Jalisco published, and they're still online, very specific guidelines that all businesses have to follow um, so that um, they can remain open. And that includes taking your temperature, um, having that mat, disinfecting mat for your feet, et cetera, et cetera, for your shoes, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, you are expected to wear a face mask and it is mandatory that you wear a face mask when you enter a business and restaurants particularly have been known to turn people down or turn people away rather for trying to enter a restaurant without a face mask. Um, so I hope that clarifies things a little bit for you. Uh, Paco, Wet and Wild posted something very important. Um, uh, I don't know what that is, Zach, but if you have it, uh, please feel free to share it with me. Um, oh, which reminds me, yesterday, uh, regarding the, the, the parties for this weekend and the fact that I mentioned a few, the businesses that were listed on the poster, um, the the editor of Gay PV, one of the local gay directors, got in touch with me and he said to me, could you please tell your audience that we have nothing to do with that party? And I said to Tim, uh, I said to him, well, you know, I'm happy to be supportive here, but ultimately it's not about what you tell the coffee and headlines community is how you represent yourself to your audience. I mean, I, you, I'm happy to relay your message and I'm happy to be of support, but as long as people see your your banner as a sponsor or your banner showing up on the website of the party, people will put A and B together and assume that you have something to do with it. And I realized that taking a stand can be complicated from some members of the community, particularly where there's a, a commercial relationship between, say, in this case, um, gay PV as a publication and the people responsible for organizing the party. But I just wanted to relay that message. Tim of gay PV tells me that he has nothing to do with the parties, and he's not a sponsor, a sponsor of them. Um, Mushi is curious if restaurant owners found patrons were aware of the rules or not. Um, there's always one or two restaurant owners here. Uh, in fact, I look at a message right here from Michael Beaufort, who says that people were very respectful and understood the new regulations, uh, no issues or no negative remarks, and um, glad to know that you were at home Early, Michael, I hope that despite the, the reduced number of hours, you guys did good business. Um, all these reports are, are, are really good. I, I, um, I enjoy the news presented by a black lipstick horned goat. You should try some BDSM outfits sometime. Oh, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. Because if you tempt me, I will become something even worse than what you're suggesting. Um, let's see. Where is my... No, I'm not going to be the pickle yet. I'm, I'm not ready emotionally to be the pickle. <laughs> Let's see, what else is in your mind? Do the shops have signs mask required? Many do. Many do, Lynn. Many shops have them, and uh, many, shops, many shops don't, but they will mention it to you as you walk in, or at least they should. Um, there was a lot of traffic coming into Vallarta in the late afternoon. Yes, there was a lot of traffic in the city, largely because of all the work that is being done in Francisco Medina Asensio. Um, oh boy, that's the question, Mike. Why do people have to be told by any government before doing what's right for their fellow humans? That's, that's, that's a big question and a very important one that we should all ask ourselves on a regular basis. Uh, I really, really believe that. Um, Michael confirms that Reglamentos is out and about doing their thing. Uh, is the expectation that people wear face masks on the street or just in indoor places such as malls? The expectation is that you wear face masks everywhere if you're out and about. Um, 
if what I do is I always wear my face mask over my face. Oh, look at that. I, my, my lips just went <laughs> somewhere on their own. Um, I always wear uh, my face mask wherever I go. If I'm walking down the street and I see no people around me and it's hot and humid, I will lower it so that I can breathe a little better. But if I see somebody approaching me, I immediately wear it up. And I think most people um, are doing that. Most people that are wearing masks anyway. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Beach in front of Grand Venetian had quite a lot of people out past seven. Well, that's that's unfortunate, Judy, and that's either sad because people choose not to pay attention or maybe they didn't get the memo. Maybe the Grand Venetian that didn't even bother to put signs on their elevator doors. Who knows? I mean, it really depends on how committed each community is to making things better for everybody else. Um, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> this is a great way to look at it. For the next weeks, just pretend you're in a hijik where the restaurants always close around 8 p.m. I love that. I love that. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Wet and Wild Crew says, I didn't even know that my logo was on there. We have nothing to do with those parties. Well, Wet and Wild, again, um, it, it's, it's good to know. It's good to know that you have nothing to do with those parties, but anybody that is not familiar with you could connect the dots in ways that may or may not be favorable for your business. And I'm not saying let us all get uh, cranky and take sides. All I'm saying is this is a time to to pick tribes carefully, I think. I really do think that. Um, and that would be Manny, my next door neighbor's dog, who's unhappy. Oh no, Manny is unhappy. Did the government confirm if supermarkets are open on the weekends? Supermarkets are not open on the weekends, are they? I forget what the guidelines are. I think, so. no, supermarkets are closed during the weekends. I don't think uh, the big supermarkets are gonna be open during the weekend, but I do know that small convenience stores will be. Uh, um, and this is an interesting comment, you know, wet and wild. You know, if you are not involved with the event, you may want to get in touch with them and say, hey, guys, we love you dearly, but get our logo off your page. Um, <clears throat> any idea why there are hardly any trash cans for public use in Zona Romantica? Um, my personal theory, Craig, is that this has to do with the fact that the city just does not have enough of a budget to go and have staff to go pick up the trash from these places. Uh, that's my personal theory. I, I could be wrong. And if I look like I'm looking elsewhere, it's because I'm used to looking at my camera, which is on top of the screen, and the horns are connected to my other camera, which now I'm looking at, but I keep forgetting. This is so crazy. Thank God Halloween comes only once a year. Um, let's see, uh, um, difficult to talk, watch without laughing at serious subjects. I can, I can be my other self. In fact, yeah, yeah. Let's take a, let's take a break from the horns. Bam. Let's take away from the, a break from the horns. Um, let's see, let's see. Manuel asks, how is this new mandate regulations going to affect the tourism industry? Well, it's only going to affect it for two weeks. Let us remember that. This is only 14 days worth of stuff. And it's going to affect it in this in two ways, I think, directly and indirectly. Indirectly, because a lot of people are not going to take time to really appreciate and understand what is going on. And they're just going to say, oh, weird things are going on in Puerto Vallarta. I'm canceling my vacation. And that will be unfortunate. On the other hand, there will be people that will pay more attention to what's going on and, uh, and we'll decide, okay, so we're fine without the nightlife when we go to Vallarta this week or next week, and I will be a happy person, and I'll be, be perfectly okay. And there are a lot of people that don't necessarily have to be out and about after 8.30 at night, and they will be perfectly happy. And I think hotels and businesses are making sure that they reach out directly to folks saying, hey, guys, you know, it's not the end of the world. This is a good measure for only two weeks, and we'll be fine. But of course, if you are the kind of person that likes to enjoy Puerto Vallarta's amazing, vibrant, diverse, 
late night uh, scene, well, this might be a time in which it may not be the best time to travel, and that's just the nature of, of the beast. Uh, let's see. I think I'm caught up with you in terms of questions. Let me then... Um, let me then swing up to the leisurely stuff and the weather. Yes, let's go. And we start with the weather. Oh, my God, I'm still horny. Hold on. Hold on, Justice. Well, I'll be horny for the weather because I'm horny for the weather. Uh, 29 degrees feels like 34. It is 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 5% chance of rain. But check it out. Humidity came down. 76 percent so i think humidity is starting to come down hopefully this means that the change of humidity is coming or it's really 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 near i'm very excited about that expect the weather today to have a high of 31 degrees humid and partly cloudy tomorrow it'll be humid through the day with a high of 31 and on monday it'll be humid throughout the day with a high of 32 not bad not bad so let's see let me come back to my big face for a second and let me prep the next things that i want to show you yesterday another um another bit of, of feedback that i got came from someone who's who has a relative that is being treated at lyme mexico clinic here in puerto vallarta and she mentioned that a lot of folks at Lime are watching Coffee and Headlines. So she asked me, can you please send a shout out to uh, Lime Mexico Clinic? And here we are. I'm happy to do that. Let me, well, I can continue to be horny for a second. Lime Mexico Clinic is a clinic here near Versailles where uh, Lyme disease is treated. I will be the first person to confess I don't know much about Lyme disease, but it's comforting to know that there's a clinic for it here. And I wanted to share that with you. Um, I also wanted to share, this has nothing to do with nothing, but the 20th anniversary for the space station is coming up. And uh, I found this really interesting article on YouTube that talks about what has gone on on the space station all this time? And I think it is an interesting, wonderful read. And um, let me very quickly set up the story that I told you that I wanted to tell you, which I forgot to set up before we started the show. And I will be with you in a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I am setting this up, I promise. Let me see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There you go. And this is almost ready to go. It's not a Halloween story, but it is a good story to share. And all of a sudden, all my screens are going places. Give me just one second. And I think I am ready to tell a story. Ah, good. Okay, so I have a story for you. And this is going to be a feel-good story. Um, and I think we can use a feel-good story. And this begins like this. So we have Alfred Noyes. This is Alfred Noyes. He was a writer, a, a composer of, of many works. And you cannot see his photo. Let me change this for a second. Let me be round. And let me be small. And there you go. Meet Alfred Noyes. He was a British composer, uh, writer of poems and short stories. And um, he was born in 1880 and, and died in 1958. Now, I want you to meet Jake Runstead, considered one of the most successful um, uh, composers, living composers in the United States. Jake Runstead is, um, he writes a lot of orchestral music, but he also writes a lot of choral music. And he has been commissioned by a number of important ensembles, including this ensemble, Northwest, I believe they're called. Uh, they're based out of Seattle. And we can see a photograph of them with um, former president and Mrs. Um, Obama 
they must have performed at the White House at some point. Well, a few years ago, I believe it was 2016, there was, oh, here's the, here's uh, the, the, this particular chorus commissioned something from Ronsted, the composer, and he chose a prayer by Alfred Noyes, and, uh, and, or that's the name of the poem, and let me just get myself out of the way so we can look at these words. The words for the poem are, angels where you soar up to God's own light. Take my own lost bird on your hearts tonight. And as grief once more mounts to heaven and sings, let my joy, let my love be heard whispering in your wings. Let my love be heard. And let my love be heard became this composition that uh, Ronsted composed for this uh, Seattle-based chorus. Now, in 2016, there were these unfortunate attacks in Paris, a massacre in which there was a student from uh, California that got killed. Um, and this uh, was the only American student, American uh, citizen that got killed in this event where hundreds of people lost their lives. So the, the University of California did a, a, a vigil for her and the chorus at the university provided the music. And of course, it was a very difficult moment for that community. And the chorus was scheduled to start rehearsing their holiday music the following day after the celebration. And, um, and needless to say, the chorus was not in the mood to start singing um, jolly melodies and, and holiday classics. So what the conductor did is he passed out a copy of a brand new composition and called Let My Love Be Heard. And of course, the ensemble learned it and recorded it in, in memoriam, in the memory of this student, Noemi Gonzalez. And, uh, and the recording went absolutely viral. A lot of choruses heard it, the composer heard it, and his remarks at the time were something along the lines of, I feel absolutely grateful that my music is providing people the opportunity to heal. Now, why am I sharing these words today? Well, because I thought it would be a good story for a good feel good, uh, a good day for a good feel good story, number one. And number two, because I thought that when we find ourselves saying so many things that sometimes can cause pleasure, but sometimes can cause pain, it is always reminded, it is always wonderful to be reminded that our voice, the human voice, this musical instrument that we all carry within ourselves is also capable of real, beautiful, transformative healing sounds. So I will leave you the link to this performance and your Coffee and Headlines homework for today, should you choose to accept it, is to listen to this performance. It's, it is only five minutes long. And for you to reflect in whatever way you choose to reflect as to how it is that we are using our voices to heal and to be positive and nurturing of others. The last thing, and that's the end of my story, the last thing that I want to share with you, actually, let me take a quick look about of your comments before I, I send you some, I'll send you off with something that is definitely going to make you smile. Uh, la, 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 can we get some quarantine calendars? <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, Michael is right. Plenty of other things to do in PV besides nightlife. Absolutely. Um, but again, you know, I respect, we are a very popular nightlife destination. I wouldn't, I wouldn't deny that, and I understand that that is absolutely essential for some people that come to visit. But again, this may not be the best time to uh, to to visit. Uh, Beach Crosser sends a, a huge shout out to Lime Mexico. Uh, this is wonderful to hear. Absolutely, um, PV has more safety precautions than we have in Canada. This is an interesting and wonderful perspective to learn. Thank you very much. Uh, Let's see. Michael always likes it when we have music, and I always have to have like to have music in the program. Uh, bam, 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 bam. 
pam 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 pam. Okay, so we can, uh, we can. Oh yes, yes, yes. I that's it. We're done. We got to the end. So I have one wonderful final short story, feel good story to share. Yesterday I had an impromptu dinner with friends at Oregano, this wonderful Caribbean restaurant that we enjoy here in Versailles, and I've been a huge fan of Chef Graciela since she opened. I don't get to go frequently because, you know, there's a budget and there's a time and so forth and so on. But every time I visit with Chef Graciela, I just love her cuisine. Anyway, we were sitting there yesterday. Uh, I was with two friends, and all of a sudden this this man walks in with a pig on a leash. And and I'm sitting having my cocktails and I turn down and I see this oink, 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 thing walking by and I'm like, oh my God, is this dinner that has just arrived? What's going on? Well, I didn't know that Chef Graciela has her own pig and the pig's name is Taco, Taco Pigman. And Taco Pigman has his own Instagram page and it is absolutely adorable because I mean, now Mr. Pigman is um, is he's he's an he's a teenager. I mean, there's some photos here from when he was a total baby, but now he's a he's a teenager. I mean, he he's he's a pig. So it, we had just a lot of fun having uh, the opportunity to meet uh, Taco Pigman in person. And all I can say is that if you have dinner at um, Oregano, you may also have the opportunity to meet uh, Mr. Pigman in person while you are having dinner there. With that said, I would like to us always thank you for your company. Thank you for your your patience and tolerance of everything that's going on around us. And thank you for your kindness. Tomorrow is Sunday. As you know, we don't talk about news. So tomorrow will be Sunday fun day. As always, nothing is sacred. No one is safe. What are we going to do tomorrow? I'm not entirely sure. Oh, no, I am because I have some things that I've been meaning to talk about. I have my 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 non-binary Katrina that I need to show you. Uh, I have my Judy Woodruff impersonation that we didn't get to last week. And um, and I'll come up with something else that is absolutely, absolutely wonderful between now and tomorrow or next time I see you. Stay happy, stay safe, stay kind. And if you're in America, in the United States, rather, go vote. If you haven't, it's important for your country. And that's it. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.